Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the ArtCast. This is our fifth episode of a 12-week limited podcast covering landmark games from Dr. Arthur C. Bartner's five decades as the director of the Trojan Marching Band and a discussion of the band's traditions. Video of the podcast can be seen on the band's YouTube channel and the Facebook page. And there's also the audio podcast available on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, and Amazon Music. And we're back again, Dr. Bartner. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you. I always look forward to this on Tuesdays. It's fun. Yeah, we've been, so we record them and then they go up a little bit later in the week. But uh, this is our fifth episode. We're going to do, we plan on doing 12. We do have a football schedule now. So there's actually going to be some games maybe later on. So we can maybe in incorporate that uh, mm -hmm. into the discussion. Um, real quick, I've got, I was asked this question a few times. Do you know, even without fans, will the band be able to be a part of the game somehow uh, this season? Well, that, that's a good question. And uh, yes, we've, we've talked to Mike Bone, our athletic director, and we've talked to the marketing people. And uh, uh, we cannot be there in person, but we're hoping to get our soundtrack, you know, all our fight songs involved during the course of the game. And then, uh, you know, pick up some kids cheering and you know playing our horns you know around the country so that's what we're hoping all right well let's so um today we usually do the two topics we talk about one of your favorite seasons a memorable season for you this one year is going to be uh the 1984 football season 1985 rose bowl against ohio state and then the traditions we talked about what the band does on game day but what are the actual in-game traditions so that'll be uh on the second part of the show but Mm -hmm. For the first topic, we want to talk about the uh, that Rose Bowl season from 1985. It's Trojan Family Weekend coming up uh, this week. One of the things we're going to talk about is your daughter, Debbie, was a sophomore USC song girl way back in 1984. And I think I have a picture of her here. Um, that must have been a real special year for you. Uh, yes, it was. Yes, it was. There I am in front of the band. And uh, there's my daughter off to the second one in. Uh, from the left, and, and that was a thrill for me. The song girl coach was a good friend of mine, Lindley Bothwell. You know, that was his domain. But just for fun, I gave the song girls a lap, uh, even though they didn't mess up. I just gave them a lap to have some fun. And my daughter called my wife on the phone, and she said, you know, you're a husband. He's really a mean guy. You know, he gave us a laugh. Anyway, all part of the family fun, I guess. Yeah. But the other song girls must not have been too happy. At, uh, <laughs> Dr. Bartner's like sending them off to do a lap because his daughter's on the squad. <laughs> right, right. Yes. Uh, yeah, they weren't too happy. But, you know, it was a very close, tight-knit uh, group of girls. And they, and they were tight with the band. You know, there was a couple of them that were dating uh, football players. The girl on the far right, my far left, I think she dated Ted Tolner's and married Ted Tolner's son. Ted Tolner was the coach at that time. So there was, there were, it was in a, an unbelievable tight family feeling about this group of young people. Yeah, well, that had to be special for you to have your daughter there involved with, with your job, but also the Trojan football team. Do you remember a couple of All-American linebackers from 1984? Jack Del Rio, uh, Dwayne Bickett. So Del Rio, he had an 11-year NFL career, and he was the head coach of the Jaguars and the Raiders. And then Bickett had a 12-year pro, uh, pro career, and he was a pro bowler in 1987. So a couple of uh, big-name linebackers uh, from that team. Yeah. You know, and I got to know those guys, you know, you know very well. And Jack, uh, he's on the left side of the screen, 52. He was like a crazy man. He's like a crazy man. You couldn't keep him out of the opposing backfield. Uh, Dwayne w was more uh, conservative, but a great linebacker. And, boy, they booked in that, that defense, and, and it was – awesome that year yeah very special uh defense for usc when you have a couple leaders like that uh other players on that team uh tim mcdonald i mean super you know he was a the great safety from usc joe cormier the big tight end and uh sean salisbury uh who went on who 
I've had him on my shows a couple of times over the years, but yeah, he's uh, he's down in Texas now, but he was the quarterback in red shirted uh, that year. Yeah, you know, uh, yes, you know that Joe Cormier married uh, Debbie's best friend on the Song Girl Squad. So it was like it, 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 that's as close as I've seen the team with the Song Girl group, and I, of course became good friends with Joe Cormier, uh, you know, Jack, uh, who uh, recently uh, was inducted into the USC Football Hall of Fame. Actually, it's all sports. And so I saw Jack maybe two, three years ago, and uh, he was coaching the Raiders. So, uh, you know, he became a good friend. So uh, it was a it was a fun time. For me as band director. For sure. And then you mentioned Ted Tolner was the coach of that team. I know you had a friend, friendly relationship with him. I think you ran into him recently at the Holiday Bowl. Yes. And, it, you know, he came up to me. He had that <clears throat> that red jacket on that, you know, he was an official guy with the, uh, with the Holiday Bowl and gave me a big hug. And he and I went to Japan a couple of times. And uh, one time was, I think, during the 85 season, we were in the Mirage Bowl and we beat the University of Oregon in Japan. And then we went, uh, I think the next year to the, uh, uh, not as a team, but uh, I was the music director and Ted was one of the coaches for the Rico Japan Bowl. So uh, we traveled together a couple of times and spent some time in Japan together. Yeah, you guys are all over the world. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> oh, very cool. So the Rose Bowl, uh, USC Ohio State was January 1st, uh, 1985, so the 84 season. USC was 8-3, and three, uh, 18th in the AP and 14th in the coaches. Uh, they went 7-1 in the Pac-12 to get the berth. Uh, they had a win over number one Washington in the Coliseum, and it was the Huskies' only loss that season. But they had those losses to UCLA and Notre Dame, and they lost to LSU earlier. So weren't in the national title picture, but, you know, win the Pac-12. Ohio State was ranked a little higher, uh, number six and number five in the AP and the coaches poll. They had Keith Byers was their runner-up Heisman uh, running back. And Mike Tomzak, you probably heard of him. Uh, he was, you know, Chris Carter, NFL Hall of Famer. You know, all he does is catch touchdowns. He had nine, pick, uh, nine catches for 172 yards in the Rose Bowl. And Ohio State was a three-and-a-half-point favorite. Um, also there was uh, kicker, Steve Jordan for USC had two fifty one yard field goals, but the story for USC was on defense, uh, gave up 403 yards, but didn't break. They contained buyers. They forced four turnovers mm -hmm. and clearly three picks of, uh, Tom Zach. So, um, that was a different kind of year for like, usually we have like defensive, I mean, offensive highlights. We're going to show you some defensive highlights in a little bit. What were your thoughts? Uh, remember from that game, uh, Dr. Bartner? It, yeah, it wasn't, it, it didn't have those, uh, you know, those big plays, those big offensive plays like Charlie White or Pat Hayden to J.K. McKay. So they didn't have those big plays. But when you go back and look at the film, the defense, I mean, it seemed like, again, Jack Del Rio and Dwayne Pickett, you know, they were in the, the backfield. Uh, they're putting pressure on the quarterback the whole game. And, and the key to the game, it wasn't that Ohio State was not moving the ball, that uh, we had three interceptions, one by Tim McDonald, and we had one uh, fumble recovery, and it was uh, Jack Del Rio that came in and uh, tackled uh, Tom Zach and, and forced him to fumble. So those four turnovers really won the game for us. Yeah, we're going to see the video in a second, just about two minutes of highlights, but watch the Jack Del Rio sack where he sort of just like walks over the quarterback or whatever. It was pretty, I don't think you could do that. It'd probably been a pet flag uh, today, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll play I'll play the highlights for you and get everyone's thoughts. <laughs> Good. Pasadena, California, the Big Ten champion, Ohio State Buckeyes meet the champions of the Pacific Ten, the Trojans of USC. One of the great days in America. Third down and long. Tom Zach in a crowd. Number 
54. Neil Hope has the ball, and then he fumbles. I think he lateraled that ball. Tom Zach, a good leader. Let's see what he can do here. He's gone. Down he goes, and he fumbles, and USC has recovered. Number 52, Jack Del Rio. That is the end of the first half. The Buckeyes can celebrate two field goals. But looking at the scoreboard, they trail by 11 as they head to the locker at the intermission. First down at the 44 for the Buckeyes, and here comes Byers. Oh, look at that. There are 10 men on Byers and one standing. No contact indeed goes to the air. Carter intercepted by USC's Tommy Haynes. Haynes at the 50 and tackled at the 48. Third and five at the Southern Cal 39-yard line. Tom Zack under a blitz. Fumbles and recovers at the 47-yard line. Pretty cool stuff going to win Rose Bowl uh, 2017. Maybe Del Rio stepping over the quarterback wasn't too bad, but he was kind of raising his arms and that sort of just walked over him. I, I don't think yeah. it would have been well received today. Marv Gu always told me that enthusiasm and spirit really plays a lot in a football team and hence the fight songs. But that defense that day, uh, they, they could have beating the New York Giants. I mean, that defense was so pumped up. I mean, I mean, you can see it. Uh, you know, every one of those guys. And, and, and that was the difference. And maybe if the defense had played that way all year long, we'd be number one. Yeah, as it stood, uh, winning that game, getting to the top 10. So that's, a, you know... That's a good season. Del Rio was co-MVP along with the quarterback, uh, Tim Green. And it was Ted Tolner's best season as a coach. Uh, he was replaced a couple years later after the 86 season by Larry Smith, who was the coach when I was there as a true freshman. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, Ted, uh, you know, again, if he didn't have to play UCLA and Notre Dame, <laughs> Ted would still be our coach. But uh, I think I think Mike McGee was the athletic director at the time. And the bottom line, you have to beat our, our two rivals. And Ted was not able to do that consistently. Uh, before we get into the uh, tradition part of the show, is that t harder for you? Because you've seen a lot of coaches come and go and you become close with them. If a, if a guy gets fired, is that, is that difficult on the relationship between you guys? You know, I've gotten to know every coach. And, and the answer you get, it's part of the business. Yeah. It's just part of the business. The, but I have to tell you, and we'll get to it, the one that broke my heart was Ed Ogeron. Oh, yes. You know, and, and it wasn't, you know, that, you know, whoever took his place, but he had endeared himself to the band, to the student body, he had just embraced the USC Trojan family, and he became one of us. And it that one bothered me more than any other. Yeah, that was a tough one. Uh, full disclosure: my friend Bruce Feldman helped uh, Ed Orgeron write a book, um, uh, and it's coming out soon. So it's a really interesting kind of look into his time at USC and then winning, obviously, a national championship last time. So you know. I'll, I'll get you a copy, Dr. Bartner. I'll send it over to you. I think you would enjoy it. Thank yeah, you. Thank sure. You. Yeah. Um, so let's, uh, we're going to switch over to the game day, tr the traditions, in-game traditions. So w episode three, I believe it was, we talked about what you guys do as a Trojan marching band on game day. But what about during the game? There's a lot of stuff uh, that goes on during the game. So before kickoff, we already talked about the tunnel run when the guys run down. So right. the band will march over to the Coliseum, the pregame lines. 
They'll play tribute to Troy over and over to fire up the Trojans and intimidate uh, the other team as they warm up. And the jump drum major uh, will stab the field at the logo on the 50-yard line. And that's a tradition dating back to 1972 and drum, drum major uh, Patrick Mott. And I'll put a picture of that up right mm-hmm. here. So what, are, what are your thoughts on that uh, tradition, Dr. Barton? Next to Ohio State's dotting the I, I think this is the best tradition in college football. I'll tell you, every camera crew that's at the game covers this, and it gets on ESPN and Fox and so on. And, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I never wanted the traditional Big Ten drum major. You know, they, they strut out and uh, they lean over backwards and, and th- throw their mace and s- spin their mace around. I wanted this Trojan, this dignified, arrogant, if you will, majestic Trojan warrior to come out on the field and uh, stab the field and, and give that power. This is, this is our home, and we n- always protect our home. It's become a fan favorite too. Uh, everyone loves watching that, and you're, you're always going to get a picture of it. And and uh, now India Anderson's doing it. We got the picture of her up there, so she did a really good job. Yeah, did she was she nervous at all, like stabbing the field for the first time? Do you know? Did you talk uh, to her about? It? Well, I I think every drum major is. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like all of a sudden you're looking at. You know, I'm I'm usually standing with her, you know, at the sideline and giving her. Uh, some encouragement, and you know you can do a great job. But, but all of a sudden, that middle of the field looks far away. <laughs> well, we've been practicing it on Cromwell Field, you know, since the beginning of band camp. Yeah, you know, so she does great. But you get out there in that coliseum, and you're facing that student body section, and and you see all those cameras, boy. Oh, am I going to make it out there? <laughs> she did great. She did great. Yeah. Well, the stabbing of the field is great. Everyone, you know, cheers. But then that's the beginning of the pregame show. And that's really not changed much for you guys over the years, right? It's pretty much been the same. Yes. It, it you know, it's evolved in the 70s. And it's uh, and it's pretty much the same. Uh, it's It's all about our terrific fight songs and uh, we have the the you know the best collection tribute to joy fight on conquest and uh fight on ends with a usc spell out and the crowd always roars uh when we hit that usc there it is right right there i think that's a a great great moment of of pregame and then uh, we close with with conquest and traveler, our mascot, uh, Galp Spy. And and what is unique is that the student body mimics the horn call of conquest. So it really involves th- the whole stadium, if you will. And uh, in between those two moments. We, we play America the Beautiful and the National Anthem, and we have a, a wonderful patriotic moment between the two school songs. Yeah, we're showing the, uh, there's the National Anthem uh, there. You know, it's like going to my first college game. That was one of the things I noticed the most, uh, Dr. Bartner, was the band was actually playing the National Anthem. You go to some stadiums and maybe they'll pump it in or whatever, but I just I came to love the you know the rendition that you guys had of playing the national anthem, and I would compare it when I'd go to other college games in other places, and it just never was as good as what you guys would do. I who who's done uh, a considerable amount of patriotic events, uh, like the rededication of the National of Liberty Statue of Liberty, uh, President Reagan's inauguration, and so on, but. Most bands kind of do it as a march, and they kind of, to me, they kind of throw it away. You know, they take it like, bing, 
bum, 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 bum. You know, they take it, I think, at a very bright tempo, where I like to take it a little bit slower, draw it out a little bit, think about the lyrics, uh, think about how wonderful this country is. So I have a, a tendency, and and I'll, I'll make some phrase endings longer than written. And it's interesting that the crowd will watch me. They will watch me like the band. And when I cut off the band, they'll stop singing and then wait for the pickups to the next, to the next phrase. So it, it's, again, it's kind of a, a, neat, a neat rendition, which is uh, special for our university. Yeah, and then you mentioned uh, conquest, where the uh, the mellophones play, the horn calls, and and you know the the crowd, you know the student body will mimic that. Uh, but it's from the Alfred Newman nineteen forty seven movie uh, Captain from Castile. Is that that's where the that's where it comes from? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. And and I never met I never met Alfred Newman, but we did a uh, we did a show that honor him. So I met his widow and I, and he, in a very musical family, uh, Thomas, uh, Newman is, is very well known, uh, composer in town, Randy Newman, uh, which was Alfred's, uh, nephew, I think, but the whole Newman family is very well known in the music business. So there's our Trojans spell out. And then the horse comes by in front, and then we march the Trojans right to the sidelines, mimicking the horn call. There's yeah, Traveler. Then, yeah, there's Traveler. And I'll put up the uh, spell out again. So yeah, during the uh, you're spelling out of Trojans, and then um, you, you guys are playing Conquest, and uh, Traveler runs by and high fives everybody and stuff. So it's uh, I mean those are pretty cool moments i think a lot of the fans just get used to it and they're like they love those traditions yes uh, you know it's uh it's very special it's very special uh and uh i you know i think the great uh university bands have this very special traditions and uh, and when we rank up you know we're always in the top 10 if not one, two, three, amongst these uh, outstanding traditions. The uh, so that's all pregame, and now during the action, the band will play from the top. They'll play fight on as the team runs out of the tunnel, and then this is a newer one, right? All I do is win. After that, with the student body, so that that must have been a newer one you guys worked in. Yes, we did the BET Awards with Snoop Dogg big Trojan fan, uh, you know, hung out with the team uh, during the Pete Carroll years. And uh, we did this tune, uh, All I Do Is Win. And there's a, a lyric again that you throw your hands up in the middle of this tune. And uh, so we played it along with Snoop Dogg. And I said, man, this, will, this is cool. We should, <laughs> try, we should try to do this. Now, you never know what things will catch on. You know, the, the band plays them and then the band choreographs them, but you never know what catches on with the student body. Yeah. But the student body is bought into this, and I'll tell you, we do it at kickoff, and they get those arms up and they flash those victory signs. And, and I got to tell you, I think the other team is very intimidating. <laughs> because uh, there's just so much energy that uh, we're going to win this game. Yeah, there's a lot of energy from that. Um, then switching to, so I guess you mentioned choreographing. When the game is actually going on, depending on what's happening on the field, you call, you're call talking, you talking about choreographing the game with what the band plays, right? Yes, yes. I, I think this is uh, maybe our greatest contribution to marching bands all over the country that that we're definitely one of the first that really choreographed the game and what this means is that we have a response for everything that happens on the field 
I mean, I've been told you don't even have to watch the game. You can just listen to the band and you'll know if we're winning or losing. And you, you see a bunch of these traditions that we have. And I'll mention a couple. On third down, when we need a first down to keep the ball, we play charge. And this was written by Tommy Walker back in the late 40s. He was the drum major of the band and kicked the points after and field goals for the football team. He did both? <laughs> yeah, and he composed. And so, you know, we, we keep this today and we get everybody to yell, charge, and hopefully we make the third down. So there's a, a huge script there of what happens, you know, depending on what's going on. But there's also some, I guess you call them stand tunes, where like Sunshine of Your Love or Seven Nation Army that you kind of mix in there sometimes? Yes, we play these, uh, you know, usually at the end of timeouts. You know, they, uh, the athletic department has their promos, and then there's usually 45 seconds to a minute left. So we throw these stand tunes in to get the crowd back up for the game to support the team. And Seventh Nation Army is kind of neat because that's an offensive tune. And the student body, this is our answer to the wave that was started up in Washington. And our guys alternate rows and they sway back and forth. And it just looks really cool. Uh, uh, the defensive tune is California Love. Which, is, which was written by Dr. Dre, a big USC fan. And uh, it just feels like, okay, defense, you know, buckle up. Let's stop these guys so we can get the ball back. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, you mentioned the wave. That's one of the things I remember uh, as a student, whenever someone would come to a USC game, they like they don't do the wave here. I don't know where, where how that started, but you guys made sure there was the wave never was happening in the Coliseum. No, no, it's not <laughs> our we. And I learned this from Pete Carroll. He he always said we not only want to be the best, we want to be unique. So you don't go copy somebody else's bit. Yeah. Now that being said, we stole the tune from Stanford, and it's called "All Right Now." Yes. And we stole it because Marv Gu loved this tune. And, uh, you know, we did a parody on the Stanford band. We played this tune. He heard it. He said, Art, you got to play this all the time. So every time we have a fumble recovery or an intercepted pass, you'll get all right now. Yeah. And it's so much fun to play it up in Palo Alto, under their band and their fans. Oh, it's, it's great stuff. Yeah. I mean, to me, that makes more sense to play it after a turnover because it's like a, it's more of a relief thing. It's a big, you know, it's a big deal. Then every first down, I think that's what Stanford does. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it's not all right now just because you got a first down, but you know, you get a turnover. That's, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, a lot of bands have picked up on this and are playing, you know, playing all the time, it seems. But but we have, again, choreographed it so that each tune has a meaning and comes at an appropriate place during the football game. Yeah, you know what's funny? I want to ask Jake Olson about that because, like, he knows what the band would play. So, as you know, he's blind, obviously. So knowing, like, oh, the, the band's playing all right now, we got a turnover and everyone's cheering and stuff. That would be interesting. Yeah, there's a... A good example, you know, a wonderful guy, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. We had him, uh, you know, Pete Carroll brought him over to the band, I think, when he was 10 or 12 years old. And, uh, you know, we, we gave him the sword and he conducted the band as a you know, little kid. Yeah. So he kind of grew up with the football team and he grew up with the band. Yeah, he's no little kid anymore. He's a big dude. Um, but that's great. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <Yes. laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Uh, so one of the things I didn't realize, and, you know, maybe just I've only, you know, I've gone to USC, so I knew the USC football traditions, but you guys do a unique halftime show every time where I, I apparently that's not the norm in uh, college band worlds. 
Yes. We, uh, well, first of all, we have a, in my opinion, a very educated audience. It's a Hollywood audience. And, and so you, you just can't go out and, and, and do the same drills and so on. So we try to vary our shows from home game to home game. And we'll do, uh, and we'll try to match up with what's going on on campus uh, for homecoming. You know, we do a homecoming show for Trojan Family uh, Weekend. We'll honor a great Trojan. I think one year we did the, the Louis Zamberini show. Uh, we obviously do a lot of contemporary music. Oh yes, there, there's a, the Louis spell out from the movie. Uh, this was uh, produced by Angelina Jolie, and she introduced the show, and we had the whole Zamborini family there. So it was a nice uh, Trojan family type show. And, and we also like big entertainment shows like Star Wars and A Salute to Pixar or, or Marvel. Uh, so we have a variety of shows that we do during the course of the year. By the way, my favorite show this year, if we were, if we, you know, were in a normal setting, mm -hmm. would be the Olympic show. Oh, okay. Because we do that every four years. And I think if we were a country, we, we would come in sixth place and we always have gold medal winners and, and we parade them through and introduce them. And uh, it's really neat to honor these great athletes. The uh, so, you know, that's we talked about the game. We talked about halftime. There's a really cool one, and I think USC put out a video of it. We're going to show it to you now. Uh, the beginning of the fourth quarter. So it's the Will William Tell overture, and this is when Traveler comes out and lights the torch. So let me play this video for you and uh, get your thoughts. Videos rolling. Videos rolling. Good. There's like a dude locked up in there in like right like basically right behind me up there somewhere somewhere over here and uh in the Coliseum below the torch and he's got to get like from the headphones cuz like phones don't work there's like some radio or something to let him know Hey, here comes this is the part of the William Tell overture. You have to turn the the torch on. That's got to be a crazy thing. Yeah. Well, it, I think it's again this and the stabbing of the field is is one of the best traditions in college football. And and it is and it's funny. I learned something new today because I never knew where this guy was who who hits the hits the button and lights the. the oh, really? Ball. But it always seems to happen in the same place in the music, very dramatic. And as the traveler is, you know, almost, you know, going by the student body, approaching the band, and it's a big roar from the crowd. It's it's really a neat moment. Yeah. I always liked that one when I remember being a student, like kind of clapping along to the overture. Like, you know, it was, that was always a neat, you know, another one of those neat traditions that when you... Uh, there's so many you guys have uh, there at USC. Yeah, yeah well, it's, uh, uh, I brought that, we were playing the theme from the Lone Ranger very early on. I brought that arrangement from Michigan and, uh, and, and then it's just how these traditions evolve. Uh, you know, you, you don't really know how they catch on, but, you know, we went from just playing it to now playing the, between the third and fourth quarter to, to bringing the horse out. And then the last element was lighting the torch. And, yeah. and that wasn't my idea. So, you know, probably somebody at the Coliseum, you know, came up with that idea and it's, it's worked ever since. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a big one that they all, uh, ever, all the students, every, all the fans always get into it. So some really great uh, traditions, but it's been a cool show. Dr. Barton, they've all been great, but you know, the, 1984 season with your daughter being one of the song girls and then the in-game traditions. That's the one, you know, most of the fans have seen those. Maybe you weren't there pre-game. You didn't see what's going on, but you've been there for the games. You've seen the lighting of the torch. So if you're a fan, I think you're familiar with all of these. 
Yes, and and I always, uh, if we're winning at the end of the game, I will sneak in Tusk. I am very <laughs> superstitious because one time I played Tusk too soon, and, and I think it was the Bruins came back and we lost the game. Oh. So now, you know, I, I keep it. I, I don't play it during the game, and I'm waiting, I'm waiting, and I'm going, ah, I think we've got this game in the back. Tusk! <laughs> and, of course, the crowd just – goes nuts. Oh. They love that one for sure. That's a, that's a fan favorite. Uh, well, Dr. Vartner, thanks again. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed it. Make sure you can check out the YouTube page uh, for the Trojan Marching Band, the Facebook page, and anywhere you can get podcasts, you can get the podcast version of the show. But I'd prefer, you know, check the video out. We got, we got some visuals here. You get to see, see me and Dr. Bartner chatting, socially distant, but, you know, we are chatting and stuff, which is, <laughs> is fun. And just to let everyone know, the band is, is uh, very close to fully funding the Trojan Marching Band uh, Pandemic Relief Fund. So all the money is going to go directly to the band's students to help them financially weather this uh, coronavirus pandemic. So you can text USC Band to 41444 to donate, or you can see the links in the description on wherever you're viewing uh, this show. But Dr. Bartner, uh, thanks again. Look forward to uh, whatever we got in store next week. I don't know what it is, but it should be fun. Okay, thank you, Ryan. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. Fight on! Right on, everyone. <laughs>